All right. So those who were out in the listening from home, let me first say I complain that you're not here because uh, there's so few people here. So my sympathy doesn't go out too much. And second off, we're trying to find a greedy algorithm. We're trying to find the shortest path from SD to T through this graph that's layered, all the edges go down. And uh, the greedy, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep just making decisions. And the first question we can ask from S is which edge do we take first? And um, well, what would the greedy choice be? Two, right? The greedy choice. Remember, you're not supposed to look at the whole graph. You just mostly make a local. We're going to talk a lot about local versus global choices, right? Local choices. Just look at the objects that you're looking at versus global means you know the consequences of your actions, right? So the obvious choice um, is we click on this so it works is to take that first edge and it doesn't work, right? Surprise, surprise. Uh, why doesn't it work? Uh, I like to say because there are global consequences of going this direction, right? Um, if you have an exam tomorrow and you have to decide whether to study or go to that party, the greedy choice is to go to the party and the long-term consequences could be that you fail out and deeply upset your mother, right? So here you go to, well, there's future future consequences, right? So, oh, let's just, we're reminding here, as I said, uh, we have a bunch of inputs. Each input ha it has an exponential number of solutions. Each solution has an easy to compute cost. And we're trying to find a uh, solution with minimal or maximum cost. So here's another example. It's kind of like the candy store, right? You, you go into a room, you're only six. You get to grab the, the prize that looks the best. And, uh, um, right, and, and, and what, I guess the solution here is this, a subset of the objects. So you're gonna decide which ones to take. And there's some underlying relationship between them that is hard to understand, but you're not worrying about that, right? There's a solution, it's a subset. Um, some subsets are allowed uh, because the objects you take don't conflict. Some subsets aren't allowed, right? For example, uh, if you take the lion, there, I don't see any zebras, but you can't take any zebras, right? You might be able to take an elephant because lions don't thin the bug elephants, right? All right, what's the cost of the solution? Well, we could have some very complicated cost, or we could just say each object has a value, has a weight, and we add them up, right? All right, so our goal is to find the non-conflicting solution, a valid solution that has highest value. Yep. The goal here is very vague and we'll do concrete examples later. The only thing we got now is if you take an elephant, you can't take zebras. All right. So what's the brute force algorithm? is you try every possible solution and uh, for each solution, see its cost, right? And what's wrong with that? They're, they're an exponential number of them, right? So the greedy choice, you commit to the object that looks best um, and we must prove that this local choice somehow um, doesn't have negative long-term consequences. Right, and in this example, you know, you could st start by grabbing the lion. Then, if you take the lion, you can't. Okay, take the elephant. You know, I was worried about elephants and lions, but you know, let's say you can't take the lion. Uh, right, and and the thing about greedy algorithms is that we want them to be very fast. 
And the way we're going to make him fast is there's no backtracking. Once you make a decision, you're done with that decision, right? So, um, so here's the code. Uh, you grab the best, the second best. You and 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 as you grab them, you see does the this next object conflict with what I've taken so far? And if it if it doesn't, then you might as well take it. And if it does, then you throw it away, right? Um, and um, we're going to see later that there's an adaptive and a non-adaptive version, right? It, depending on um, as you grab objects, does what looks best in the future change, right? If it doesn't change, then we might as well just sort the objects at the beginning, right? So here's the, I, I find Corman, if you're going to look at Corman, um, I haven't looked at it in 25 years, so I'm just going off what I say every year, is that um, I think they define greedy algorithms in this iterative way, and then they prove they work in a sort of recursive way, which confuse people. All right, so anyway, you can still, you can think about the recursive version in which you look at your first object and you either accept it or delete it, and then you you narrow the reduce the input so that it doesn't contain that first object, right? And then you recurse, right? It's about the, it's about the same. Um, all right. So we to define your greedy algorithm, you need a, a couple things. One, um, um, you need a greedy criteria. And um, I've I've actually proven uh, published a few papers on proving lower bounds on greedy algorithms and dynamic programming algorithms. So when you want to prove that there's not an algorithm for something, then you have to have a more formal definition of what it is, right? So that's kind of why I'm being anal here. So the greedy criteria is you don't know what the objects are in your input, right? We're just starting off. And for every possible object that's in the universe, we assign a value to it, how much we like it, right? Sort of a priori, we know how much we like zebras and how much we like lions. Um, and then when the, when the input arrives, we, we don't get the input all at once, right? Because we're not allowed to see future objects. The, the objects in the input are sorted according to our greedy criteria, and they arrive to us in that order, right? So there is also this sense of an online versus an offline algorithm, right? Uh, offline is you get everything at once and you can think about it. Online is these objects are coming at you and you have to make decisions on the fly, right? Everybody kind of get that? And then you have to make a greedy choice. Um, when you receive the next object, you, of course, know the past, but you don't know the future, and you have to decide whether to take it or not. Is prioritization a way of like, adding heuristics to the function? Uh, yeah, this is, all, this is all a heuristic in some I mean, what's the difference between a heuristic and an algorithm? An algorithm is guaranteed to give you the right answer, and a heuristic is not, right? So uh, if this worked, it would be an algorithm. And if it doesn't work, it's a heuristic, right? And uh, what's the use of heuristics is, is um, well, ideally, they're not a lot of work, right? I mean, you can, you can do this really fast on the fly, and... Uh, Maybe it doesn't give you the optimal solution. Maybe it gives you a good enough solution. Maybe it gives you, maybe you can prove that you're guaranteed that you're within a factor of two of the optimal solution, right? Different situations. But, but yeah, this, it feels like a heuristic because it's so easy, right? So these choices I said are irre irrevocable. Right, you grab the objects in this order, you make a decision about them, you can never change those decisions. 
Right? Everybody get greedy algorithms? Right? And why are we being so restrictive? Is to ensure the algorithm is fast. Right? Um, in fact, the running time, anybody can think about what's the running time of a greedy algorithm? Yeah, well, I would say yes. First, you sort the inputs based on the greedy criteria. So that could take in log in time. And then you fly through them. So I guess it depends on whether the input comes pre-sorted or not. Um, all right. So let's be concrete here. Um, this is the game that I just naturally play uh, my whole life. And um, maybe if you're sufficiently nerdy, you play it too, right? You, you get a heavy pocket filled with change, right? And your goal, because you're a nerd, is to always keep the minimal amount of change in your pocket, right? Which becomes more complex when you're buying something because you have to quickly do math and say, I'm going to give them $5.73 because when they give me change, I'll then have the minimal number of change, right? But, but now it's slightly easier. You have an infinite number of quarters, nickels, dimes, and pennies. This is back. The slide was made before we got rid of our pennies, right? And, uh, and you have an amount that you want to make up, say 92 cents, right? And I'm assuming, and we want to we want to grab a solution is a subset of the coins that adds up to 92 cents. The value of the solution is the number of coins. We want to minimize that, right? So how do you get the minimal number of coins in your pocket? Everybody, what's the algorithm? Yeah, you just exactly. Exactly, you just grab quarters, right? So um, there's a solution. It's not optimal, right? What's the algorithm? You The degree criteria is you first consider quarters, then dimes and nickels, right? So what, what's the motivation? It's because it gets us to 92 cents as fast as possible while adding fewest coins to our pot, right? Criteria is you take it as long as you don't go over 92 cents, right? So here you take a quarter, you take a quarter, you take a quarter, you don't take the dollar, right? You go back, you take the dime, you, you uh, don't take that, and then you take, uh, you don't take any nickels and you take two pennies. Everybody, Get the algorithm. Everybody's, you know, you've grew at least, I don't know what country you come from, but if you come from a country that has nickels, dimes, and pennies, right, do you have a, a feeling that this gives you the optimal solution? Right? Right? All right. So, uh, so it is... So if you believe that this gives you an optimal solution, does it only give you an optimal solution in Canada or are there other countries where it doesn't give you the optimal solution? Can you imagine a country, I mean, with currency where this fails to work? India, why does it fail to work in India? All right, but you have some currency. Yeah, we could do it with bills too. Right? You can do it any bills, I mean any objects. All right, so you might think it works and it doesn't. All right? So suppose you live in a country that has a four cent, three cent, and a one cent coin. All right? And you want to make six cents. Right? So how do you make six cents? Well, the greedy algorithm grabs the four cent, right? And then can't take the three cent and has to do one one, right? Well, the optimal solution takes two threes. Right? Everybody see that? 
So, so this, this gives you an appreciation, hopefully, that sometimes the greedy algorithm works and sometimes it doesn't, right? And uh, in fact, um, during the, I, I was teaching a grad class where everybody had to give a presentation and somebody gave a presentation on if your input tells you the denominations, can you determine whether or not the greedy algorithm works? And it was surprisingly complicated. Um, another fact is, in general, if I tell you, if the input tells you the, the denominations and how much you want to make, um, in general, finding the minimal number of coins is MP complete, non polynomially, non deterministically polynomially, which means, which we'll learn later on that we don't have a polytime algorithm for it. And if you did, then you would be rich in the banking systems with slot groups. Everything would be problematic. Cryptographically, we would collapse. All right, so, so it doesn't work. 